Okay, so today we're going to be talking about post-rendering, so, and more specifically, post-rendering for interiors. Well, I'll do a separate video for post-rendering exteriors, uh, since processing both of those after they're out of Revit is um, pretty different um, when it comes to what you need to do to get a decent image for interiors and exteriors. Uh, so, I've been using this uh, file for the most part for uh, rendering settings and everything that I've been doing as far as rendering goes. So we're going to stick with that. Um, and basically I've, I've rendered this image uh, and exported it. Um, so basically what this looks like when it comes out exported, I've opened it in Photoshop. So this is kind of what it comes out as. And I want to make this look a little bit better than what it is. So rendering rendering interiors i can i can go from a rendered image to a final image pretty quickly interiors look pretty decent coming out of revit um so if i go up to image adjustments brightness contrast i can up the contrast a little bit and and get a a little bit um a little bit nicer looking image uh kind of enhances the colors and and all of the different stuff that's um going on there Unfortunately, I'm also losing a fair amount of detail kind of in the in the cabinets and in some of these these lines and that sort of thing. Um, so what I like to do to kind of punch up the edges of stuff and just it just makes things pop just a little bit more is if I go back into Revit, um, what I'll do is after I've rendered this image, I'll click on a light and hit hide category so it hides all of my lighting and essentially I'm left with everything that I want to see. Um, I don't want to see my see my little studio lights floating around everywhere. This is all just the physical objects in my model. And I'll come up here and hit File, Export, and then come down to Images, Image. And basically what I'm going to do is I want to export this line work the exact same size as my uh, as my rendering so I'm gonna hit zoom 100% and you can you can choose PNG if you want um, or you can choose lossless JPEG and you want to make sure that your uh, image quality is the same quality as what you've rendered so I rendered at 300 dpi so I'll export it as 300 dpi um, and then I'll change the output to exactly the file location and everything of where I want it to be I've already done that, so if I go back into Photoshop here, if I go File, Place, and it's gonna open up my dialog box, and you'll see I have a bar draft, which is what this is, and then I have a bar line work, and that's kind of my naming convention that I've got for everything. I have a draft version, that's what Revit specifically shoots out, and then I have a line work version of that. Um, this is also really handy if you're trying to grab something specific in a rendering really quick. If I have this overlaid and if I hit normal, if I throw this on multiply, all of the line work overlays perfectly on top of where everything should be. So if I wanted to grab this ceiling real quick, all I have to do is click on my line work and click in that, that little scope there and all of a sudden I've got that line work and if I flip back to that, um, that my image layer. Now I can adjust that ceiling independent of everything else. So having that line work is really nice for just being able to select individual pieces uh, really quickly if you if you need to kind of adjust something. But the other reason I have it in here is now all of these lines are really stark but I don't want them that intense so I'm gonna drop it down to say say like 20 percent. If I drop that down to 20 percent now you can see it doesn't look any different right now, but if I turn that on and off, you can see all of those lines kind of punch up just a little bit. And that punch up just gives me a little bit of an edge around the doors. It gives, just punches those like details up just a tiny bit that allows the image to kind of seem a little bit more crisp uh, than it otherwise would. So the only other thing in a, in a rendering like this that I might go ahead and do because time is everything and this is probably good enough to take in front of a client and give them a pretty good idea of what they're going to get from, um, from the design that we've given them is 
I'll throw like a picture frame over here that's on, I'll just make the background white. I might search for a Google image of like any sort of painting or something like that. If they're super contemporary, I'll look for modern art or something and I'll throw that in there and throw it on a multiply layer. Um, if I throw it on a multiply layer, since I've got this as white, all the shadows and everything that might be cast on this and any gradient and lighting, that all shows through. Um, so that way I can get the perfect shadows, perfect lighting, everything on whatever image I happen to want to throw on that painting. So for interiors, that's essentially all there is to it. Um, as far as what I do for my um, post rendering uh, sort of processing, um, it's pretty quick. It's kind of in and out and it produces a, a fairly decent image. Obviously there's software out there that you can get really, really nice images out of. Um, but as far as Revit goes, I'm getting my, I'm getting my renderings out of it. I'm getting shop drawings. I'm getting construction drawings. I'm getting everything that I need out of that. And unless you're shooting for an entirely photorealistic, unbelievable rendering, to me, this is good enough for my time spent because uh, start to finish, I'm able to create a model like this in probably four or five hours um, and then have this quality of rendering. That's pretty good for time spent. So for me, this minimal amount of processing is good enough. If you're a real stickler for it, making it super hyper realistic, Revit might not be the program that you want. You might need to export it and take it into like a 3ds Max or a Rhino or something like that uh, to get the render quality that you want and be able to render in, you know, some sort of um, like virtual engine um, or V-Ray or something like that. So as far as getting a decent rendering out of it, that's my processing for interiors. Um, the next video will go over processing for exteriors.